Today's video cast deals with how to linearize a quadratic function. On the left side here with the data set, you've noticed that I've already put in the time seconds, and that's on the x-axis, and the position change, which is in meters, is on the y-axis. We already have the data in here for time. We have the position change in here as well. And you'll notice that the graph is, uh, all the data is on the graph already. So we do have the origin, which is important. It's nice to see the origin there. But you'll notice that even though the data towards the right looks a little linear, um, it definitely has a curved shape to it, which tells us that it's, in this case, it's going to be a quadratic function. So what we do here, uh, before we dealt with the linear fit, right next to it with the curved red line is actually the curve fit. So we'll go ahead and click that. By clicking the curve fit, this box will come up. Um, and we'll notice right down here it says quadratic. So we go over here, we click that, it looks like a quadratic equation, and we'll go ahead and hit this try fit button. Now what it does is the try fit actually puts a line through all the data points, and you'll notice that this line pretty much goes through all of the data points. That looks good. We'll click the OK button, and you'll actually see it. The, here's the BRAC, and here's the CAT, and all six pieces of data in between. So you'll notice that it, it rests, the line rests right on the data, and we have the equation a is a value of 3, so it's actually 3x squared plus, well, this is basically 0 because it's negative 7.493 times 10 to the negative 16th, which is basically 0. And this bottom number of c is also pretty much 0. So the equation that we have here is pretty much y equals 3x squared. What we're going to do, though, is we want to linearize this function and get it to be a straight line. So what we'll do is we'll go up, uh, we'll get rid of this box first, so we click X on the box, that gets rid of that data. We're going to go under data, and this time we're actually going to go under new calculated column. By going to new calculated column, what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want this to be time squared. Now the short name again is CC, uh, we can label that as TS for time squared. Now in this case it has units, and the units are going to be seconds, but since we're squaring the seconds, it'll actually be seconds and we'll go to the superscript and we'll put a 2 here. So it's seconds squared. Now in order to get the calculated column, we have to tell the computer what equation we want. So we'll go under variable and we'll take time and we are going to multiply it. So that's the asterisk, that's the shift 8. And we're going to go back to time and so we punch that in. Times, time, times, wow, a lot of times, is time squared. So we click done and you'll notice up here under TS we now have seconds squared and these are the values taking time and squaring them. So here's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and 6 squared. What we have to do now is go down below to the x-axis. And so we're going to change time, and we'll left-click again, and we will change this to time squared. So now, all of a sudden, we have time squared. We hit the A button to auto-scale, and we double-check our zero zeros here so we have our origin in place. And this data looks pretty much like it's in a straight line, so we'll go ahead and hit the R equals button, which is the linear fit. And you'll notice that this is now a slope of 3 meters per second squared, and the y-intercept was 0, because pretty much this data is spot on. So you would anticipate the y-intercept being a 0. So our slope then is 3 meters per second, and the units of meters per second squared, sorry, it's meters per second squared, um, comes from the fact that we have a change in y, which is meters, and a change in x, which is seconds squared. So our units are going to be 3 meters per second squared. We'll talk about what this actually means when we do a lab on this in class. And that is how you linearize a quadratic function.